Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. This is the very beginning of Act 4. So let's take a look around and see who's aboard the boat. It looks like at the moment Kate, which I'm guessing is this person, and Will, who I don't see. Uh, I think Will was the person that was working on that strange mechanical elephant mammoth thing back there. Uh, before I do that though, a couple little things I want to point out. When is that? I noticed that Shannon is wearing, I'm pretty sure, Conway's jacket, I guess to keep warm. Perhaps Conway's inside. And the second thing is, there's a really cool little detail here that I noticed. So, you notice how these, um, these little interaction things are moving with the boat? So, if you put your mouse on one of them, the cursor, your cursor actually follows the interaction it actually moves with it, but if it's off of the button, it doesn't follow it. Just one of those really cool little details that makes interactivity just a little bit more pleasant. That way if you mouse over something, you won't accidentally like not click it when you meant to, just because the boat moved. Super cool. Also, I think that's a dog right there. Looks like Kate has a dog and I don't think that's blue. Let's go see, speak with him. No, that's definitely not blue. Hey, Kate. How's that cold river spray treating you? I thought I saw you squinting. It's hard water, you know. Hard on the eyes. It still irritates mine a little, and I'm piloting a tugboat through it six nights a week. Oh, they're the pilot. Don't be too shy to close them in public. Your eyes, I mean. People just assume you're thoughtful. You need... You need tea? So... Agrasibi... Agrita? Definitely. Peppermint, dried spring. Agaricus, milk thistle, dried reishi. I'm pretty sure I pronounced half of those wrong. What are all those for? Eyes drain. Dried spring agaricus masks the taste of the rest of it. Dried reishi in particular has an eccentric flavor profile. It's mushroom based. I'm a big believer in the fungal pharmacy. Is that your dog? Yeah, that's Valkyrie. I call her Val. She's a rescue. Isn't she dignified? I've always thought so. Very dignified. I hope you enjoy the trip on our little mammoth. Take advantage of all the amenities. Fresh air, cozy bunks, hot tea, the video room. There's some pretty interesting tapes down there, actually. Unusual, I mean. Weird. Watch out that VCR doesn't take your hand off, though. It's untrustworthy. What's wrong with the VCR? I could take a look. Oh, please do. I don't know anything about electronics. Maybe try a few different tapes. You'll get the picture. Hey, do me a favor. Go ask Will how the repairs are going and if he needs anything. We're coming up on the next stop here, just refueling and picking up a few things. I could grab a bolt or some wire or something. Whatever he needs. Well, eyes on the road. <laughs> One of the questions was, is that your cat too? So I think the cat is somewhere on board, and that means that the cat that we saw by the docks, back at the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces, is probably theirs as well. Elephant, mammoth, what's the difference? So neat looking. There you are. Oh, and there's blue. 
old sea dog. I don't think blue's a sea dog at all. <laughs> what even is a sea dog? Is that even a thing? I don't even know. I just made that up. Anyway. Singing quietly. For we on mold and whiskey fed and... To Shannon. Oh. What gears? Did you build this thing? <laughs> no. This thing's probably older than I am. Got some gray in her belt. They're calcium deposits, I guess. To be honest with you, I'm not really qualified for this work. But Kate's a friend. You know how it is, don't you? But Kate was asking if you needed anything when we stopped. Hell, I don't know. Scratch ticket? <laughs> uh, how do you two know each other? So... Ever walk through rolling farmland? Just drove, I guess. Right, nobody does it, unless it's their land to farm. I mean, they'll walk from barn to tractor or tractor to truck, you know. Well, I sure did. I slipped under or over fences and I walked barefoot with the seeds when they were just planted and tilled the earth with my toes. Hey, I should tell you where I left my shoes. Did you know I'm a classically trained organist? It's true. Look at these long fingers and pedal-gripping toes. Oh, hey, Ezra. That, that's me saying it, not them. <laughs> eh, it doesn't matter. A minor in French literature earned me a position teaching Artaud de Zola at the university. Well, some shitty governor cut state funding for a department and I was demoted to mopping floors. Running wiring through walls or in dangerous places. I even operated the soundboard at the student theater. I left my shoes there. At the university. It was a protest. Walk without shoes for... something important or tragic. I ended up by the shore and soon I was drifting along the Echo. It ran for a while above ground then. It doesn't anymore, but I prefer subterranean waters anyway. Kate brings me along and I record what I see in here. I try to help with maintenance. I drop off the mail and pick up the trash. On occasion I take the helm. Anyway, that's all I try to remember anymore. I listen to the river stories, and my own stories get fainter and fainter. Well, I'll just keep drying gears, I guess. Ezra runs up to Shannon. Whoa, slow down, it's slippery up on deck. Do you have batteries? Yeah, of course. What for? Johnny said I could use his tape recorder, but it needs a battery. Oh, fun. Well, Shannon searches her pockets. Here's four different kinds. Surely one of these should fit. Thank you. Oh, that's why I just walked off, because I'm, <laughs> I'm not controlling Shannon anymore. A little bit confused there for a second. You got your batteries, small man. Go get you some tape. Hey, who are you calling small man? That's... weird. But I mean, fair enough, I guess. I love how the perspective shifts. Can I go upstairs? Hmm. Doesn't look like it. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> the way the inside's revealed. Who are these people? I like they could be John two of them could maybe be Johnny and Junebug if they changed clothes or something, possibly. But not I don't know who the third one would be. Maybe none of them are known. 
Oh, okay. So yeah, one is Johnny and Junebug. To Junebug? Really? You were entranced. You don't remember this? Clara is the third one. It's okay. We've all seen a lot of concerts. Cyrano opened. His tape machine was broken or something. It got really cosmic. Right, at the flower shop. I remember that show. I just... Sorry, Clara. Well, you have a second chance to hear it tonight. To Ezra. That was fast. Got the batteries? Let's see. Perfect. This one will do. So, you hit this button here to record. Hold it right here so you don't cover the microphone with your hand. I bet you find a lot of good sounds just around the tugboat. There's plenty of tape in there, so don't be stingy with it. Just record anything that catches your ear. It really changes the way you listen. For the better, I mean. To Clara, are you playing a concert tonight? I could record that. Yeah, Clara here came all the way from Lithuania just to do this river, uh, Echo River gig. <laughs> it's a tour. Tomorrow, I'll be in Nashville, and then Atlanta, and then over to the coast. Brutal. Well, we're lucky she's making a stop. Johnny and I saw her play once, and I remember loving it. And Johnny was moved. Speaking of Serrano, it's his night at the rum colony. Kate said she usually stops off there. Well, that's ideal. I'm supposed to meet a lady there to look at some old engine parts about three hours ago. Three hours goes fast at the rum colony, ma'am. I bet she's still there. I hope we don't stop there too long. My concert is soon and I don't want to keep them waiting. Nah, it's river time. Nobody expects you to be punctual. To Ezra. Hey, why don't you give that tape recorder a try? See if that cat over there has anything he wants to say. Oh, is the cat right there? I think it's there. Am I actually going to get to record stuff? That'd be super cool. I often use found sounds in my music. If you find some interesting sounds tonight, you can help me out. I do get to record. Record the kitty. Uh, Conway? Meow! Just had to be patient. We got a meow. Oh, now I'm playing as Conway. Oh crap, I didn't mean to go outside. Wait, am I... Oh, I'm not in control at all, am I? Now who am I in control of? I think Shannon? Anyway, uh, let's just stop for a second. So, why does Conway now have a... Uh, what should I call them, I guess? A stranger limb? They have another limb that looks like it's from one of the strangers. One of those crystalline projections. Like, why is their arm like that now? As far as I know, there was nothing wrong with their arm. Are they just transforming part by part? Does anybody notice this? Is it only Conway that can see it, or what? You know, it's the strangest thing. I can't remember why I came up here. Neither can I. <laughs> Damn noisy river. It's just that thing about... What was it? When you walk through a door... When you go into the kitchen for something, and as soon as you pass from one room into another, you forget what you wanted. You have to walk back out just to remember, like you left a part of your brain behind. Hey, I wonder if I could follow that brain crumb trail all the way back to the room I was born in. <laughs> Conway cranes his neck over the railing. You were driving for hours. Get any sleep? It's 
Just resting my eyes for a minute. Every little bit helps, right? Shannon leans over the railing and looks at the river below. It does look cold, doesn't it? Yeah. Better keep that kid away from the edge. Person could easily fall in. He's been exploring. He seems to keep himself entertained. Hmm. That's good for him. It's important to know how to... Hmm. How to be alone. What's up, huh? Look like there's something you want to ask. Fine, you can ask it. One question. Yeah, so about the drink or the hard times thing. Because remember, we kind of accidentally, inadvertently got ourselves caught up in debt servitude, basically. Hmm. I thought you didn't drink. Well, I didn't. I mean, I did, and then I didn't, and then I did again. That's how it always goes. I drift out, finally wind up back at my sets with my head between my legs, saying never again. Fifteen months this last time. I think I hung on because I knew there wouldn't be... Uh, there wouldn't be for much long... Wait, because I knew there wouldn't be for much longer be... In what? Okay. <laughs> Uh, I need to edit that sentence. I think I hung on because I knew there wouldn't be anywhere to go back to for much longer. She went to live with her sister now, and she probably won't remember me for long anyway. Aww. One time she picked me up out of a ditch by the road, blackout drunk at dawn. Came around later that night. She'd taken care of me. I told her I didn't deserve it, and she said I didn't have to deserve it. So you'll go to the distillery instead? I've got to repay my debt. Hell, I should be grateful for the opportunity. If you want to die with any dignity, you've got to settle up. That's why it's such a damned shame when people go sudden. Why does Conway find it so normal? Just like, yeah, I guess I'll just go work for these crystalline people. Underground making alcohol. Like, what the hell? I'm sure I talk too much. Everyone on this river does. The problem is that we listen twice as much as that. We're only telling you half of the stories we hear. Kate told me that I ought to have been a photographer. She said, you have an uncanny way of having been in the place at the time the thing happened there, and that's the hardest part of taking a photograph anyway. Nice of her to say, but it isn't true. Though I know just about every story on this river. Most of them I've picked up second, third, or fourth hand, and so on. Listening, see? Now I know what you're going to ask, so I'm going to answer it. Yes, I'm sure they're all true. I personally believe a story gets more true as it's tossed around from brain to brain and the whole community brings their insight to bear on the brittle facts of experience. There are a few Echo River stories I witnessed directly. I saw that big owl migration pass through. You might have heard about that. I was there when the old train station flooded. I saw the ghost of Stephen Bishop brew up a batch of white lightning on a raft. Or, anyway, I talked to a few sailors who'd recently crossed part, uh, paths with him, and I suspect sampled his wares. Stephen Bishop would be the person who founded the distillery, right? I don't think they ever said that their first name was Stephen, but they always said Mr. Bishop or something like that. One night, when I was working on the Mucky Mammoth, we picked up a gaggle of passengers headed down to a mail drop by the silo of late reflections. I knew a couple of them in passing, a pair of traveling musicians, whom I often encountered on the river. The others were strangers to me at the time, a young woman, a small boy, and an old man whose name I didn't catch. Oh, and a smelly old dog. Hey, mean. <laughs> so they're telling the tale of us. And while they're telling it, we're just bobbing down the river. So cool looking. 
We docked at a gas station so the mammoth could refuel. Hmm, does Ezra stay or follow Junebug and Johnny? Let's stay on the tugboat. Look around the map room. Ezra watches the lake drift by. He sees... A worn flock of bats, a floating gas station, a buoy covered with gray crabs, a boat covered with shimmering crabs. What a relief. Thanks for taking the wheel. Our secret, okay? How do you know which way to turn? I just keep my eyes open. That's the most important part. Speaking of which... Looking outside... Oh hey, there's a gas station! I was hoping we'd cross paths soon. It just kinda drifts around. You never know where you'll meet it. As you can see by this dial right here, our fuel situation is pretty desperate. I have a bad habit of letting that needle spend a lot of time in the red zone. We should only be docked at the gas station for a few minutes refueling. You might just want to stay aboard. So, you like boats? I've never been on a boat before. Oh, wow. Well, here you are. I think this is as good a place to start as any. So, what else did I neglect to explain earlier? This area here is called the wheelhouse. All these gauges and controls help me understand what's going on with the mucky mammoth and her hull. This is a compass, but it doesn't work very well down here for some reason. I just go by landmarks, basically, and lights. Did you see those two lights on the sides of the boat? A red one and a green one? All the other boats have them too. Some are different colors or in different configurations. If we cross paths with someone, right away I can work out what kind of boat they're in and, and what direction they're going, even in the dark. It's all about looking up here. The other half of piloting this boat happens down in the map room. Speaking of which, Kate peers out the window. Have we passed the big rock that looks like a dinosaur yet? No, but we passed a tall building covered in Christmas lights. Ah, river folks call that the lighthouse. It used to be an art museum, but their collection went out of fashion. And they had to put it all in storage. I don't know who put those Christmas lights up. Some artist, I guess. That's weird. We should have definitely passed Dinosaur Rock by now. Kate looks out the window. Oh, wait, there it is. Up ahead, see? That doesn't look like a dinosaur. No? Well, maybe you're right. It's worn down a bit since it was first discovered. It's strange, though. According to my charts, we should have passed Dinosaur Rock before the lighthouse. But that's okay. Sometimes the charts need updating. Hey, Will is down in the map room right now. Could you run down and help him adjust the charts to move the lighthouse so it comes a little earlier on our route than Dinosaur Rock? The map room is down below deck on the lower level, right next to the sleeping quarters. I'll get on the intercom and let him know you're coming. Kate's a really cool character. Let's see if we can get any interesting sounds. Let's be patient. Hmm. Well, I waited about a full minute. Nothing. Unless that itself is a noise. Can't tell. I don't know if that's just like generic tape noise or something specific. Yeah. 
Oh. Conway looks to be very, very drunk. One, two, three, four, five, six. I count six beer cans. Between that and Conway going into debt servitude very soon, apparently, and one of their another one of their limbs mysteriously becoming crystalline, they are doing very poorly. What's up? Going below deck to look at the maps. Maps? Oh, yeah, I bet they got a lot of them down there. Yeah, you probably need maps to travel by boat. Myself, uh, personally, I don't use them. I read the signs and I remember the roads, you know, uh, landmarks, or I ask for directions if I'm going somewhere I've never been before. It's okay to ask for directions. Remember that, kid. No shame in asking for directions. Okay, thanks, Conway. So can I go outside? No. Um. Where do I go from here? Do I need to click on this button? Oh wait, there's stairs that go down that way, okay. Is Shannon's hand shaking? This is harder than it looks. Yeah, it takes a certain kind of ear. Oh! Oh, that's, um... It's a musical instrument. What is it called? Like the... Uh, something rod? It's something that makes noise based on, like, the position of your hand, or I guess probably any body part to it. What's it called? Oh, like, perfect pitch? Do you have that? Uh, not really that, it's more like muscle memory. When I'm playing the theremin, yeah, theremin. I kind of hear with my hands. That <laughs> must sound ridiculous. No, no, I, I think I get it. Oh, look at that, you can see bugs down there. <laughs> Underneath the hole. Cool. Salutations, small man. Kate says you have an adjustment for our charts. Good timing. I'm just checking my copies. That's how we keep our charts up to date. As we pass through a section of the river or the lake, I draw a new copy of the map and make adjustments for anything we see that doesn't match. Will points to a small drawing on the map. So, this is where we have Dinosaur Rock marked now. This little dinosaur drawing. I drew that. What kind of dinosaur is it? Oh, you know, just a dinosaur. Will points to another small drawing on the map. And this here is where we thought the lighthouse was. But now I guess we've got to move it back a bit. But how far? I wonder. Any ideas? Anything else you remember about when you saw the lighthouse? Um, I saw the clock. We passed the lighthouse six minutes before Dinosaur Rock. That'll do just fine. So, let's see. At our current speed, that would give us a distance of uh, about an eighth of a mile, let's say. Will measures along the charted lake with a divider. Somewhere around here. Good enough, huh? That should do for the new copy. Oh, I made some other corrections. Tucked in the banks a little, made this section deeper, left off a shipwreck that must have washed away or been scavenged into splinters. Of course, it means a lot of clutter, all these old copies. 
say. Will gestures to a pile of old maps. I was just about to throw this stack out. Maybe you'd like to hang on to one? They're out of date, but they could be fun to look at. These are mostly river charts, I think. Take a look through and see if one of them catches your eye. Ezra digs through the pile of maps. Let's see, a faded old map, a crisp clean map, or a rough torn map? Let's go with a faded old map. Here, turn it around, like... Uh, there you go. There's no real idea of north down here, magnetic or otherwise. So we just hold the maps with the current pointing down. The river curves clockwise around a few small islands. A note is scribbled along the margin. Islands just below the surface only visible under bright light. They come and go. The islands, that is. I still mark them if I see them. Oh, I can look at the others before I take one. Okay. Let's look at the crisp, clean map. That one I found wrapped in plastic. Quite well preserved. I wrapped it up like that so the chalk wouldn't smear. Must have lost my pencil that day. I don't remember. The river curves clockwise. There are no islands marked, but a few other landmarks are indicated with chalk circles. Pointing to a chalk circle. That one was a lighthouse, I'm pretty sure. Let's look at the rough one. The edges of the map are torn in gentle strips, probably by an idle hand and an absent mind. Oh yeah, I remember that day. Slow currents. Boring. Not that I mind. It's healthy to get a little bored sometimes. A long tear runs in a clockwise curve along the paper, through the middle of the river. The two sides are held together by paper clips, woven into the paper like stitches. So the first one has islands under the water marked, the second one has some landmarks, and the third one has... I don't know. The third one has rips in it. <laughs> um, hmm. Let's take the first one with the underwater islands marked. Nice. Well, thanks for help with the chart adjustments. Our next stop is a bar called the Rum Colony. I guess you're not much of a bar fly, but you might like to run around on the beach. And the decor is... Well, I'd be curious to hear what you think of it. Oh, I thought this was the old description, but it's not. That gas station isn't anchored to anything. It follows the current. We might run into it anywhere along the river. Kate just starts looking for it when she's low on fuel and the echo provides. It's not usually on the lake, though. That was strange. Kate had theory. She thought the rude weather upstairs was flooding the river and everyone headed down to the lake to ride it out on calmer waters. Anyway, my mechanical musician friends went ashore for a bit, too, looking for some snack foods. Kate doesn't stalk anything aboard the mucky mammoth that doesn't grow wild, and it's not to everyone's taste. Or maybe just to stretch their limbs and charge their batteries. They came back looking kind of confused, though. I don't mean confused like... Not like when somebody asks you a question and you don't have the answer, but you feel like you should, and you get that kind of alarmed blankness in your mind's eye. Not like that. They look confused like when you see two kinds of motor oil, and they cost the same, and you've never heard of either of them, and you read all the text on both packages, but all that new information just makes the choice seem even more impossible. You might be inclined to flip a coin, but how could you with something that important? Naturally, I assume they met the gas station attendant, a man as anonymous and itinerant as the place itself. I assume he talked their ear off. Everyone on this river does. 
But I know that fellow well enough to know he wouldn't want us reminiscing on him now. So, they came back aboard, Mammoth refueled, and we ambled on toward the rum colony. Let's see, what's Shannon gonna do? Retreat to the TV room to browse the Mammoth's video collection, or... Go to the rum colony. Hmm. Well, I don't want to spend all my time on the boat. I want to see some of the things around. So, let's go to the rum colony. It's interesting. All these decisions make me want to replay this and do the other thing and see what happens. Whoa, the atmosphere here is so cool. Uh, it looks like it just saved. Cool. So I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to check out the rum colony. <laughs>